Hello, Culture Kids. Welcome to our episode. My name is Asher, and I am your host, along with my mom, Kristen. Hi. Today, we're going to learn about something that I practice every week. That is from Korea. Mm-hmm. It is a martial art, but it is also a way of life. This is a big part of Korean culture. Asher, can you share with us what this is? Big window! Yes! Is a national sport in South Korea. It loosely translates to the way of the hand and foot. Tae means foot, Kwan means hand or fist, and Do means way. Yes, so putting it all together, the way of the hand and foot. Despite what many people think, Taekwondo is not just about fighting. It is a way of life that teaches self-defense skills as well as character, leadership skills, self-discipline, and confidence that can be used in anything we do in life. You got it! And it's always about trying to keep the peace. And it's about showing respect. Well, thank you very much. Beauty of Taekwondo is that its techniques are designed to work no matter what size, weight, height, or age the person is. Yes, like I do Taekwondo, and I'm purple belt, and learn all the moves, even though I'm only five. Taekwondo is for everyone, whether you're a girl or a boy or a grown-up or a child. Wow. At Asher's current Taekwondo school called Lima Taekwondo, kids as early as three can participate. In some parts of Korea, even two-year-olds can start. <gasps> we know Taekwondo come from Korea. But let's learn about how it started and why it's so important to the country. Even though it wasn't first called Taekwondo, the skills and forms have existed in Korea since about 2,000 years ago. And I don't even know anyone at 100 years old. (laughs) So one of the earliest clues of Taekwondo was in a painting on a tomb that was built in the Korean kingdom called Koguryo. So as we discussed, this was about 2,000 years ago. And the tomb is where dead people are buried. That's spooky! So the painting had two people facing each other in a Taekwondo style. Yeah, There were other drawings in the tomb that showed people wearing uniforms that look similar to the Taekwondo uniforms we wear today. Yup, then later a kingdom called Shilla emerged the kingdoms together. In the Shilla dynasty, there was a group of warriors called Hwarang, which means flowering knights. The Hwarang warriors were very brave and they were selected from the royal court. They were taught to defend their beliefs and to serve the king. The Hwarangs focused on respect, listening to parents, and being loyal to friends. And most importantly, it was about avoiding violence or killing when battling. I like that. Because people think Taekwondo is only about fighting. But I think it's more about learning skills to not fight. Exactly. Go in peace. But a long time ago, these skills and forms weren't called Taekwondo. They were called Subakdo. Ooh. Then the skills used in Subakdo was also developed into what they called Taekyeon. Taekyeon became the national sport of Korea until the early 1900s. And then many years later, in the early 1950s, Taekwondo was created by a captain named Choi Hyung-hee by combining all the different styles of martial arts that existed in Korea under one unified style. Choi Hyung-hee is a very important person in Taekwondo. Yes, it's important to know that this happened after the Korean War, which was a big and sad event in the history of Korea. It was very important to the Korean people that our culture and heritage was honored and preserved. 
So that's why in Taekwondo, even when it's practiced in America and other parts of the world, they're always teaching us how to count in Korean and bow like the Koreans do. It's a way of showing respect to Korean culture. So now we get to learn about what Taekwondo is. Yay! yay. And why it's so important. Okay, everyone ready? Most people understand Taekwondo to be a physical sport that involves fighting. But as we mentioned, it's never just about fighting. It's a way of life. And even though every Taekwondo organization has different philosophies, philosophy is like someone's truth, an idea. Got it. Yes, so even though every Taekwondo school or organization may have their own philosophies, generally they all focus on the following ideas. Respect for everyone. Thank you. Like teacher, family, and friends. Creating a peaceful world because it's not about fighting. It's about learning to create peace. Perseverance. Like learning to work hard and go to think window every week. Like I do. Woo. And lastly, self-control. <laughs> When Asher sometimes gets silly during Taekwondo, his masters always remind him to quietly stand in line, wait for his turn, and not bother anyone. Oh yeah. But I sometimes forget. You're silly. And it's also about not flipping your lid and how to express your big feelings in a calm way. <sighs> Other philosophies can include confidence, yes, building leadership skills, and humility. Humility is always trying to learn something and being kind and respectful. And like mommy always says, uplifting others. All the best to you, my friend. Yep, these are all important life skills children and grown-ups can learn if they practice Taekwondo. There are many rules you have to remember in Taekwondo. Okay, everyone, we've got this. For example, the training place is called Tochang. Every time you enter the mat or exit, you have to bow. Well, you are also bowing to the South Korean flag. Even if you have to use the bathroom. <laughs> When you get back, you have to bow. Yes, and there are no shoes allowed on the mat, ever. No. There are also guidelines for bowing, too. First, you stand straight with your fist to the side and scream, Chariot! Chariot means attention. And then you say 경례, which means bow. And you always have to say yes sir or yes ma'am at the tochang. You can't just say, okay, yeah, whatever. Yes ma'am. No, you can't. It's always about showing respect to your masters and your colleagues. And you always have to speak clearly with lots of confidence, but only when it's okay to do so. Got it. And of course, the physical techniques are important. Though every Taekwondo school is a little different, Taekwondo focuses on kicks, hand attacks, blocks, patterns, and self-defense. Sir, yes, sir! The main focus of Taekwondo are the foot and hand techniques. But there is also a bigger focus on the footwork. Some of the big ones we learn are front kicks, side kicks, roundhouse kicks, and axe kicks. But there are so many. That's amazing. And all the kicks can be done as jump kicks, spin kicks, or jump and spin kicks. The combinations are endless. The hand techniques can be closed hand, like with the fist, or open hand. The hand strikes can be done in many ways from standing, jumping, or spinning. And of course, blocking techniques are important. <gasps> Each block can be combined with another punch or kick to make a counterattack. Another important training technique in Taekwondo are patterns. They're called pumse in Korean. Patterns are a series of movements put together to form a cool sequence. 
kind of like a dance. No, it's not a dance. Oh. It's Taekwondo skills put together into a pattern of moves. The patterns are important to learn because it teaches you most of the techniques you need to know in Taekwondo. Each step and movement in the pattern should be performed as if you are dealing with an attacker. Oh no! There are 24 official Taekwondo patterns, but each pattern is different depending on the level. What? Yes, this leads us to discuss the different levels of Taekwondo. This is very important because students love to work toward a higher belt. Yes, I just got my purple belt. Congratulations! The belt color determines your rank in Taekwondo. Everyone starts at white. White means you're a beginner. Yes! There are two groups of belts. The first one is for junior level students. Yay! It is called Kup. Depending on the school or organization, there are about 8 to 12 levels. Then when you reach black belt, you enter a different level. Ooh. The black belts are divided into ton. Yes, the black belts are divided into ranks that are called tan, or in English, degrees. The tans start with the number one, so first degree black belt. Yes, my master. And there are 10 degrees. <gasps> but that's really hard to achieve. And it takes forever! Yes, Asher started Taekwondo at the age of three and a half, and it took him a couple years to reach the purple belt. And it will get more challenging as the belts get higher and higher. You dare challenge me? But I can do it. And I'll reach black belt someday! Yay! You got it! No doubt about it. We also want to say a big thank you to our amazing masters at Lima Taekwondo for making a big difference in so many students' lives and helping them achieve their goals with not just Taekwondo skills, but with many aspects of their lives through discipline, hard work, and perseverance. Well, we never end our episode without some jokes. Asher, do you have a Taekwondo joke you want to share? Yes, I have one. What is the favorite drink of the Taekwondo master? What? Fruit punch! <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, my turn. Your turn. Taekwondo master was holding a bowl of candy. When the students wanted some, what did the master say? What? You can have candy, but you can only... Taekwondo. <laughs> Wait, I don't get it. You can have candy, but you can only take one, though. <laughs> like, take one candy, though. I get it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us on another fun episode. We have some cool news to share, though. Culture Kids Podcast won a scholarship to attend a podcast conference called Podcast Movement. We're actually in Las Vegas this week attending the conference, and we learned so many cool things about the podcast industry. We just want to thank everyone at Podcast Movement for hosting an amazing conference, and we are so thankful to have been a part of the event. Stay tuned for more episodes next week and don't forget to hit subscribe and let us know what you want to learn about next by leaving us a voicemail on our website or by writing us a review. Until next time. Bye ha. Bye ya. Yeah.